الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد يقول الله عز وجل ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيد الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this verse that corruption has flourished on land and sea as a result of people's actions and he will make them taste the consequences of some of their own actions so that they may turn back or so they may they may return to him azawajal and this verse is one that is very important in light of what we see happening around us in the corruption that we see in the land in terms of our society in terms of pollution and in terms of a lot of the ideologies that we see spreading around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us very clearly in this verse of our individual roles in the spread of that facade. And the amazing thing about this discussion is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's emphasis on our personal agency and our ability to implement that change. If I want this facade to stop, if I want this evil to stop, if I want this corruption to stop, if I want this pollution to stop, all I have to do is make an effort and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put blessing in my effort and allow it to stop. And we might look around and say, well, there's so much. What is it that I can do? What is it that I can contribute? And the first thing that I can contribute is my mindset and understanding that yes, there is evil and yes, there is fahish and yes, there is corruption but the only thing that aids all of this corruption is evil itself and evil has no strength. And what I want to do is good. What I want to do is khair. What I want to do is blessed and the one that stands with me is Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of all people. And if I know I have that strength, and if I know I have that backing, and if I know I have that support, then what is going to stop me from those changes? And many times, all it takes is a few words. Many times, all it takes is just standing up. And many of us, if not all of us, have been put in different situations where someone said something wrong and we were there and we witnessed it and we heard it and we refused to say anything. Where we allowed evil to take precedence. Where we allowed this vile, corrupt, diseased statement to go forward and we had nothing to say about it. We'll find that all of this happens because of our silence because we refuse to engage. And it's not necessary that we fight. It's not necessary that we're aggressive. It's not necessary that we hurt anyone. But I have to say something. It's not enough for me to uh, allow someone else to take care of it on my behalf. Thinking that, oh, the masjid will do it, or this organization will take care of that, or this institution will do it on my behalf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obliged every single one of us. And my level of obligation changes on my level of involvement. I might be less involved, but there are things that I can do. And sometimes those things, like I said, it could be as simple as dua. It could be as simple as saying something. It could be as simple as asking someone. It doesn't require a lot. And this is what Allah wants from us. He wants us to put forward effort. Because it doesn't matter how much we do, the reality is, is that our success, it hinges upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. That's it. I make the effort, and Allah will put, take care of the rest. And how many of us sitting here can claim? How many of us sitting here have the audacity to say that we are deserving of what we have right now? How many of us can boast and say, I am deserving of my eyesight, or I am deserving of my health, or I am deserving of having two hands, or I am deserving of receiving a paycheck, 
or I'm deserving of having a car, or I'm deserving of a place to live. And if we understand that we're not deserving, then we know it is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor and His mercy and His blessing upon us that we are allowed these things. And if we know that He's allowed us these things, why am I quiet? Why am I silent? Why do I do nothing? Why do I wait for others? And that is the power in this ayah. That power of agency. And that power of free will. And that power of ability. Allah has blessed every single one of us in different ways. And sometimes it's difficult for us to take account of that. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me with children? Or why did He allow me to get married? Why did He allow me to have friends? Why did He give me stability? Why did He allow me to live in a safe place when many of my family is living in an unsafe place? And sometimes we overlook those things. But I want us to reflect on those things. And I really want us to think that probably the biggest issue most of us had coming into the masjid today was whether my, gas, my car had gas in it or not. And that in itself, if we think about it, is a ni'mah, is a blessing. I didn't have to worry about being kidnapped. I didn't have to worry about getting shot at. I didn't have to worry about someone stealing something from me. All I had to worry about was making sure that I made it to Dar al-Hijrah at 1.30. And why did I need to make it before? To make sure I had a good parking space. Just think about all of the blessings throughout every single one of these steps. And Allah, all He wants us to do is He commands us to do good and He forbids us from evil. He commands us to tell others what is good and He commands us to tell others what is bad. What is happening around us today is because of what we and are lacking and what we're not doing. And like I said, Sometimes something as simple as a du'a. The power behind that message that we send to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in hopes that He accepts. There's a great power in that because it puts hope in our hearts and it gives us strength and helps us understand our position with Him Azza wa Jal. So if I want change, if I want my neighborhood to be cleaner, if I want my neighborhood to be safer, what steps am I taking to do that? Am I keeping my yard clean? That's the first step. And it's very unfortunate that many times we will go into a neighborhood and we'll be able to point out which house is the house of the Muslims because of how unkempt they are or how mistreated they are. Is this the image that we want to portray? Alhamdulillah, there are still many, many hamd, Muslim brothers and sisters who maintain their homes. But why do we allow ourselves to dip to those levels where they stand out and people do not look forward to us moving into their neighborhoods? People should be excited when Muslims come into a space. People should look forward to when Muslims come. They say, Alhamdulillah, the Muslims are coming, the neighborhood is going to get cleaned up. We're going to have less crime the neighborhood is going to be more organized. But the problem that we have, unfortunately, is that many of us are selfish and all we care is what is happening between our four walls. One of the unique characteristics of the Muslim is the barakah and the khair that he brings or she brings when they come into a space. And we need to ask ourselves, are we bringing that khair? Are we bringing that barakah when we walk into that space? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all mubarak and make us all the agents of change and agents of good and those individuals who bless others and bless ourselves. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidil Anbiya wa Mursaleen Nabiina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd Yaqul Allah Azza wa Jal Ya Bani Adam khudu zinatkum anda kulli masjid Wa kulu wa shrabu wa la tusrifu Innahu la yuhubbil musrifin 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Children of Adam, dress well whenever you are at worship and eat and drink, but do not be extravagant. Allah does not like extravagant people. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also told us how to change our environment. And for some of us, we might know or we might be aware, September is Environmental Awareness Month. And some of us immediately think into the grand ideas. We start thinking about solar power and wind power and green energy. When the reality is, if I want to make the environment better, I, do, I follow this ayah. All I need to do is consume less. That's it. All I have to do is not fall into extravagance. That's it. And someone might say, well, how does that help? Because I won't be buying a new phone every year. I won't be changing out my car every three years. I won't be looking to remodel my home constantly. And all of those things, they require material, they require digging, they require more resources, and they require removing old resources and destroying them and adding to pollution. So we can look for alternative forms of energy. But if we just end up using more, how are we solving any problems or any issues? And like I said, many of us try to make this a big grand issue and say, okay, well, we need to switch to this and we need to switch to this. No, we need to stop falling into israf, period. And if I stop being extravagant and if I stop being excess, then I will have less of these issues. I won't have to worry about taking advantage and hurting the environment around me. Because I'm doing the best, the moment I do my best to protect my heart and its attachment to this dunya, the better I will be at taking care of the dunya that's around me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this earth as an amana. He gave it as a trust. What are we doing to fulfill that trust? What are we doing to take care of it around us? And like I said, the simplest thing we can do is stop being wasteful. When I go to make a purchase, make sure that I actually need what it is that I'm purchasing. Do I need to upgrade right now or can I wait? And sometimes even cheapness can be extravagance. And what do we mean by that? Is that I'll buy a very cheap tool, it'll break, and I'll go and buy two or three more. Instead of just spending one tool one time and not having to spend it again. So when we go to purchase, make sure that we purchase quality. Because this helps our community, because now we're contributing, and we don't end up purchasing again and again. When we have this mentality of always looking for the least, what we're going to get in return is the least. We as Muslims need to make sure we keep our standards high. We as Muslims need to make sure that we have good quality. We as Muslims need to know that we are contributing in the best way. And the best way to contribute is to make sure we're doing it in the best way. Whatever I put in is what I will get out. And if I'm putting in little, I will get out very little. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the investment he made in his companions and the time and effort that he put in them, he raised the best generation. There's no doubt. He raised the best people. He raised the best examples. And when we look at the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah tells us about him. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ وَسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That in the Messenger of Allah is the best example. And he's our best example as an individual. Type, who is our example as a community? And that's where we look to the companions. رَضْوَانَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ That this is how a community should be. A community is one that looks out for each other. A community is one that employs one another. A, com a community is one that uplifts everyone in that community and they aim and they strive for high standards and high quality. This is how we will better ourselves. We will not better ourselves by being cheap. And being cheap is a type of israf. Because we are not benefiting anyone. We have to make sure that we are ummatun wasat. That we always follow the middle path and we always follow the middle way. And if we don't, that is where we fall into extravagance. That is where we fall into cheapness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He warns us from both of these things. He says, لا تجل يدك مغلولة إلى أنقيق ولا تبسط كل البسطة He says, don't place your hand on your neck and don't open it completely. Meaning, don't be cheap 
And don't be a spendthrift. Don't try to save every single dime and every single penny. And he said, don't waste all your money. It's amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this fiscal responsibility and this ability to be balanced in how we live our lives and how we spend our money and how we deal with others. All we have to do is follow that advice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this wonderful manual in his book. One that unfortunately many of us read just for barakah. But one that is meant to be understood, one that is meant to be followed, one that is meant to be implemented. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the Ahl Quran. May He Azza wa Jal have mercy on all of those who have passed. May He Azza wa Jal give shifa, give healing to all of those who are ill. May He Azza wa Jal help all of those who are in any type of financial hardship out of that hardship. May He Azza wa Jal help those who are in debt out of that debt. And may He Azza wa Jal gather us in His paradise. Wa qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. استغفر الله لي ولكم ونساء المسلمين كل ذنب الخطيئة إنه غفور رحيم وقيم الصلاة